friends. Oh man, it's uh, quarantine day 632. I don't know at this point. <laughs> You know, it's it's been three weeks now. I can't even believe I've made it this long. I I kind of cracked a little bit. So Thursday, I went to drop off to my mom uh, her Bath and Body Works soaps and um, something else I bought for her. And she's like, "Come around back, you know." So I can't, I went and walked around the back of their house and sat outside with her. My dad had a beer, and it was like the first time I just been around real people in person. <laughs> And, uh, and then I went to the store and a lot of people around here are complaining about the stores being crazy and being packed and people not paying attention to social distancing. So maybe I've gotten lucky the two times that I've gone to the store in the past three weeks. It hasn't been bad. It hasn't been crowded. Um, people have been pretty good about it and I haven't felt like anyone's come super close to me or anything. Um, I don't know, but I've heard, I've heard bad stories, but yeah, after I got back from the store, which... Um, I decided to go because, you know, my friend Josh works for a hospital. He has all the predictions and everything and the predictive analytics for the state show that the hospitals will be the most overwhelmed in Illinois on April 17th through the 21st. Uh, but that includes Chicago and it's mostly Chicago. So we're kind of behind that. But you figure if somebody's going, they say like, you know, if you get coronavirus, you're probably not going to go to the hospital until you've had it for like a week. You've had symptoms for like a week. So if you figure like if people are going to be in the hospital on the 17th, then they're probably starting to have symptoms on like the 10th, which means they're probably getting it on like the 4th or the 5th, which is now. Today is the 4th. Um, again, we're probably behind that a little bit because that's skewed forward by the city. But, um, you know, I decided to go one more time before... Uh, I don't know, not leaving my house again for, I don't know, a freaking month. But yeah, when I got back from the store, I just felt very like energized and I felt like good to have gotten out of the house. Like it just, it just, it was great. <laughs> um, and it made me realize how much this is killing me. So yesterday, when I say I cracked, yesterday, um, I bought all this stuff to make Bloody Marys. And uh, it was nice out. Uh, it, and it was like, you could sit outside. So I invited Josh to come over and sit outside like 10 feet away, like more than six even. And he did for like 90 minutes. Um, he's super busy with work. It was like the first break he'd taken. So I think he was happy. He was like, yeah, I'm glad I did this. I needed this. But yeah, I had him come. He didn't come through my house at all. He walked around the back. I had set up a chair, I put his drinks down, <laughs> and then I backed off, and we sat apart chatting for a little bit, and then when he had to leave, I like held open a bag for him to put his glass in, I'm like, put it in there, and it's still sitting downstairs. <laughs> Probably going to be murder to wash that thing, but yeah, I'm not going to touch it for a while. Um, you know, I guess that's technically breaking the shelter-in-place order, but like, it's so hard when you live alone, man. You know, I see, and everyone keeps saying on the media too, like, this is the time to hang out with your family and get closer with your family. And I see other people in my neighborhood hanging out with their families outside and stuff. And I'm like, ah, but I, <laughs> it's just me and the dog and the cat. Um, I needed social interaction, but um, it's not, that's not like going to be a regular thing or anything, but it was nice. But yeah, uh, man, you know, I'm surprised I made it this long, honestly, because I'm the type of person that has to get out of the house like a couple times a week or I start going crazy. I start going crazy generally if I'm home for more than like one day a row, in a row um, without being able to go out and do anything. Um, everything has been canceled for me. So my dentist canceled. Oh, God, it sucks because, you know, I have this tooth in my mouth that broke off and it hurts, but the tooth doesn't hurt, but the gum around it hurts sometimes, which is weird. I'm not sure why that's happening. But my main thing, when, when they call to reschedule, they, they're just canceling everything for April, you know, and reschedule for May. And I was like, well, I think I want to go towards the end of May anyway. But then to get a cleaning on the same day, which I wanted to do, I had to wait till June 4th. Um, and my dentist is an hour away because I still go to one that is where I used to live, but he's worth it. So I drive an hour. It's really not usually a big deal. But it's still nice to try to get, if I have to go for a cleaning too, get it all in one day. So I'm waiting till June 4th for that. 
But then it's like my deductible actually rolls over at the end of June because we're on an academic schedule. So everything starts new July 1st. And I haven't spent my deductible yet this year. So I kind of want to push it to July just so it'll be on next year's deductible. It's only $175. It's not a huge deal. But um, but I, I don't know. I had the receptionist ask the dentist. So am I at a risk though right now with this open part of my tooth that when I chew, like food... Is like getting like in the tooth and am I risking the longer I wait, the more that could potentially be decaying and I might need like a root canal or something. And the answer that the dentist gave was very generic. It was like, yeah, the longer you wait, the, the more you do risk that. There's really no telling if that amount of time is enough that it could cause that. Uh, it's really up to you. <laughs> I'm like, dude. <laughs> oh, so I just made it for June because I was like, I'd rather pay $175 than need a root canal, but it's like only one month. I don't know. And it's like, I already have to wait. This tooth broke in freaking February and I've got to wait till June to get it fixed. I mean, luckily it's not bothering me that bad pain wise, but I am just afraid of what's going on. So yeah, obviously that canceled. I had my virtual appointment with my endocrinologist and she is cutting my medication, my antithyroid medication in half. She did say something, she didn't, she, she said something along the lines of, you know, if I'm having any weird symptoms, it could be because I'm not hypothyroid, but you know, I, I was kind of thinking like I'm hypo for me, you know, like my, I look back in like in 2015, um, when I was just having like a random check, like blood test, my TSH was 1.4. So if you figure that's normal for me, when I have graves, it's active, it went low and it went down to 0.07 or 0.01, it went down to 0.01, and now I've swung back up to a 2.4, that's kind of, it's not hypo, but it's hypo for what my body's used to, and she did admit that that is a thing, and it could be affecting me, so we're cutting the medicine, and I'm hoping with that, that my, that weird thing that was that rash that I had under my arm kind of seems like it's mostly gone away, but not totally, and she had never heard of that, which was weird, and then, like, my skin, though, like, I'm really hoping my skin stops being so peely and, like, rashy um, with that, so I actually feel like my eyes have hurt a little more this past week, though. And I'm hoping that's not because I cut the thyroid medicine. It's not supposed to be related, but they have just been like hurting me a lot this week after having like a month where they seemed fine again. But I don't know. Um, the, the other place that I need to get to is the vet. Um, but my sister who works at the vet is like, no, don't. So I saw a dog that I wanted to adopt. Like, I, it was, like, the perfect dog. He was so cute, and he was, like, river size, mostly black, some white. He looked, like, kind of like he could be a bully mix, but, like, he definitely wasn't, like, 100% pit bull. He, he kind of reminded me of, like, a Spuds McKenzie type dog, you know? Um, but anyway, he was really cute, and I really, really wanted him, and I saw him posted from the local animal shelter, but when I contacted them, they said they had sent him to a rescue, and I tracked him down there, and I was talking to them, and then they said that he got adopted the day before, and I was, like, so upset, but, you know, so yeah, I've been on Pet Finder a lot lately because I've been planning on getting another dog ever since I moved here, you know, the reason that I moved and stopped renting was because I was like, River needs a friend, and man, she does, like, she's been bored. <laughs> She tries to throw toys at the cat. She tries to, like, get the cat to, like, tug the rope. And the cat is always just like, you're dumb. And it's super cute, but it's also like, oh, my gosh, I got to get this dog another dog. Um, Yes, but I'm super upset that I must missed out on that one because it just, like, right away I saw him and I was like, oh, that's the dog I want. He's so cute. Um, he was everything I was looking for, but... Anyway, I didn't get that one, but uh, in looking, and it's just, it's the same thing I went through last time. It's, it's really, they make it really, really tough um, to actually rescue a dog. And it's like, I understand that, that you have to jump through all these hoops and some of them are like home visit required and all this and that, but I hate, and I know it's because, you know, I'm sure they get a lot of dogs returned and stuff because the fit isn't right. It happens, you know. It happened to me with that original river, the, the river that I had before I had this river. Um, I didn't have this channel back then, but I had uh, 
attempted to adopt this dog that had been a stray and I was at my not my old place but the place before that which was really small and didn't have like much of a yard or anything and this dog like it was too big it was too big for the apartment <laughs> and couldn't be uncrated and it just was like not a good fit and the dog wasn't happy and the dog needed a yard like that dog wanted to be outside all the time it just stood at the door all the time and I felt really bad for it and I ended up going back to the rescue and saying like hey I don't I don't know that I'm what this dog needs it was really hard and I made a video on it about my on my candle channel about it and I was like I was crying it was horrible um, I ended up continuing you know I definitely offered to foster the dog until they found a new owner but they put it back on pet finder and then um, when they did find a new owner I talked to that person you know they asked me questions all this stuff basically I acted as a foster instead of actually keeping the dog but when I did drop it off to the new family which they had another dog they had a fenced in yard it was great and I cried and <laughs> I gave them all these supplies that I bought for her it was a really tough thing but you know it, it, sometimes it is hard. It's difficult and you don't know if it's going to always work out. But especially with, you know, not puppies. Puppies are very moldable, but when you get an older dog, you know, their personalities are kind of set and you have to work with them. I mean, River that I have now, this River, she's freaking neurotic and she ate a curtain. <laughs> but, you know, we're working it out. Um, but yeah, so I get why they do so much screening, but when it's so much easier to just buy a puppy from a breeder, I feel like some people just do that because it's so much easier. Uh, but as I'm looking at all these requirements for the rescue, you know, it's, they're, they're, they say anyway that they want to, they want to visit your home. They want to check your, if you live in a town home. Um, this one place said you have to prove, if you don't have a fence in yard, you have to prove that you take up to two walks a day. And I'm like, how do you prove that? Uh, but they want to see your condo association paperwork. They also are going to call your vet and check your vet records and all of your animals that you have currently must be up to date on all vaccines, but also have always been up to date on everything. And so with the association paperwork, that's where this whole thing comes into play. And I know I've talked about this on this channel when I was moving, but you know, my main goal in moving was to get another dog. And they showed me this place and the realtor was like, it's great. They have no restrictions on breed weight or um, breeds or weight or anything with dogs and blah, blah, blah. I put in my offer, everything was going. And then they finally got me the association paperwork, which I hadn't seen. It took them forever to get it to me because, um, like it wasn't a thing that anyone paid attention to so they had to like go to the you know president of the association he had to dig it up and find it and send it to me and when they finally sent it to me it is default paperwork from the place that built these in 2004. so it hasn't been updated since 2004 when these condos were built and it still has the name of the construction company at the top like it's not They've never updated it. No one has ever done anything to these archaic association rules. But it says buried deep in there, two pets maximum. And when I saw that, I almost backed out of buying the place. I was like, that's not going to work. I want to get another pet. And I was assured by the realtor and the people who lived here, the previous owners, that like it was not a thing. They didn't even know. They had no idea. There are plenty of other people here that have at least two dogs and they probably have cats and nobody's paying attention and nobody knows. The city ordinance says you can have three, three, um, no more than two of the same breed, but that you can have a cat and two dogs. That's no problem. And most associations just go by city ordinance. So it was weird, but again, I don't think it's anything that anybody ever paid attention to. Um, from what I understand from when I moved in, uh, the treasurer of the association is a guy I used to date. So I had to contact him for how to send in those payments and we chatted for a minute. And you know, he said, I, I asked him like, how'd you get how'd you get swindled into doing this? And he said that the president basically came to him and said like, somebody has to do this or it's gonna be taken over by an outside like, place and he didn't want that so he agreed to do it but like yeah I have a feeling like nobody really cares about this condo association in this neighborhood it's like not a thing and nobody cares and I absolutely could have another dog and no one would say anything and nobody would care and whatever but 
and I was assured that and I took the place anyway, but now I run into it now with the fact that I, that I might see a dog that I want and it's from a rescue that's going to check that paperwork and be like, uh-uh. And it's like, I mean, I have to tell them that I have River because I want them to meet and make sure they get along. But I also feel like I need to tell them that I have a cat because I want to make sure the dog I'm getting is okay with cats. I don't want to lie about it and pretend Clover's dead or something. Plus, she's all over my social media and these places will probably check social media. And I don't want to like just, you know, I don't want to have to like do that. <laughs> like Go hide all evidence of me having a cat and lie about it. That seems silly. And then there's the vet. So I had to call my sister while she was working and ask her, like, can you pull their charts and tell me what they're due for? And of course, like, River and Clover are both due for everything. So they're not up to date, you know, with this whole coronavirus thing. I have put that off. And I mean, here's the thing. Like, I know my animals are both protected totally. Uh, you know, I mean, if you lapse, I, again, I worked at the vet, like, if you lapse on your vaccines, not when they're puppies, but once they've had them for a while, like, they're protected. I mean, you and I don't go every year and get our mumps, measles, rubella, right? I mean, you don't go as an adult and get your polio vaccine. Because if you had it as a child, you had your boosters, you're, you got all those childhood vaccinations that protects you for the rest of your life. And honestly, somebody's going to yell at me about this in the comments, but it's the same for animals. <laughs> it really is. Like, studies have shown, like, peer-reviewed studies, um, that animals get their vaccines and then they're protected for... I think that the, the study I was looking at showed animals are protected for up to seven years. And it wasn't that after seven they weren't anymore. It was just that that's how long the study went. Um, but yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? Like, again, like if we're protected from childhood, I mean, so are your, your animals. I, I, there's this thing called a tipper test or a typer test. I'm probably saying it wrong. It's some kind of test that starts with a T and you can actually test and see if your animal is still immune to these things. Um, but they're really, really expensive, uh, like $300, $400. So like more expensive than just getting the vaccine again, but it does feel a bit pointless, but to just keep doing that and potentially even kind of bad for an animal. You know, I think of my 10 pound cat who has had many, many rabies shots in her life. Uh, and but she hasn't had one in over a year now and I think I got her one before I adopted River because I knew the rescue was going to call to make sure that she was up to date but I, I even don't even really like the idea of giving it to her because I feel that it is an unnecessary shot of chemicals. Now I'm not anti-vax and I'm not even trying to have that conversation at all but I'm just saying the cat lives under my bed. She's had many shots. I'm sure she's protected. Um, I take my animal health and maintenance very seriously and I, I'm super diligent about heart guard, like heartworm protection and also flea tick because, you know, working at the vet, I would see people sometimes come in and I think, you know, people, they just don't know, you know, what's the most important and what's not. But I, but I would see people who would come in and they would say, okay, I only have so much money and they would get the rabies, the distemper, the leptospirosis, the Lyme sometimes even the kennel cough vaccine, they'd get all those vaccines, but then they'd turn down any kind of heartworm preventative. And I'd be like, oh, you know, I wasn't my place to say anything. I wasn't the actual veterinarian or anything, you know, but um, I saw cases of heartworm, you know what I mean? And that, that you definitely should be doing. I mean, you have to do the rabies because that's the one that's, you know, illegal if you don't. But after that, if you can only afford one thing, it should really be like heartworm preventative because it was so sad seeing those dogs that would get that. And it's so easy to get it from a mosquito, you know. So anyway, um, point is, I know my animals are protected, but they're overdue for their vaccines now. But when uh, I told my sister, I'm like, look, there's a dog I want. Uh, I know they're going to call the vet for a reference. I got to get my animals in and get them up to date because they're not up to date right now. She was like, no. She was like, you don't want to do that right now. She's like, I would wait. Everybody here um, is touching animals all day, hugging up on people's animals. We have to hold them while we do stuff to them. She says, nobody's being careful. Nobody cares about coronavirus. All her coworkers are still just like sharing food and stuff um, that they did implement that they need to be wearing masks now. But she says like some of her coworkers just toss her down on the counter to like eat and then like pick it up and put it back on. And she says like, nobody's being careful. She's convinced she's going to get it. And she advised me not to bring the animals in. 
and uh, it doesn't really matter because I missed out on that one dog that I wanted anyway, but, you know, I just keep thinking, like, if I see another one that I want, I have to, like, act fast, but <sighs> my animal, I need to get these two fixed before anyone's going to give me <laughs> an animal, so um, another one, so, uh, yeah, I gotta, I have to figure that out, I guess I'll just have to, like, do it real quick if need to be, but then I, I think that will look bad if, you know, they ask, like, when did, when were they last updated? Oh, two days ago. Oh, well, uh, so, you know, it looks, it looks fishy. But it seemed like a really good time to get another dog because, um, you know, I'm home and I'm not doing anything. So it's like, you know, it's a good time for it. And I shouldn't say I'm not doing anything because work is crazy and I'm doing a lot of work and I've worked um, not my main job but my my side job today for like three hours before I filmed this video. Um, I also had a uh, the reason that I even am filming this video is because I had to put makeup on anyway because I had agreed to call this parent of a student that I was working with and she wanted to know if I could call her today so that her husband could listen in too and so I said sure no problem and uh, we agreed on 10 o'clock and then she wrote back and was like actually can we FaceTime and I was like oh, fine <laughs> I gotta be camera ready now at 10 on a Saturday. Jeez. But anyway, yes, it would be a good time to get a dog because, you know, I'm home and, and, and I'm bored and it just, yeah, it just seems like it would be a really good time and I was going to do it anyway as soon as I got back from my vacation. That's not happening now, but I don't know. I'm still on the lookout. I'm still mad about that one dog because now I feel like I'm not going to find another one that that is as perfect as that one was. Um... Yeah, and then, uh, so, I guess nothing else is really going on. I, uh, I made tacos today. I feel like my tolerance to alcohol has gone way down because <laughs> now that I'm not going out and having beers up the street anymore, um, just having a couple at home and I'm, like, waking up with a little bit of a headache, like, oh, man, I only had two beers. What the heck? Like, I better be careful when things open up and I can go out again because my tolerance has been zapped. Um... So yeah, um, I, uh, I bought some stocks. <laughs> I had been wanting to invest in Beyond Meat since they went public, like back in the fall. And I missed the boat and I didn't. And then the stocks like shot up and, um, and now of course everything's really low again. And I've been watching it for a really long time and it got, it could not, got down low to where like, I don't think it's going to go much lower. So I bought my first stocks. I bought five shares. Woo! -hoo! Um... Yeah, I used Robinhood. It's all good. So that's what part of my stimulus check went to, um, which is probably what you're supposed to spend it on, right? Like the stock market, things like that. Okay, sounds good. The rest will probably go to candles. Um, yeah, so I don't think there's anything else to say. Um, hmm. I'm bored. I gotta find somebody to Skype or Zoom tonight. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, this life. It's weird, man. It's weird. I actually haven't had that much time to actually, like, binge watch anything. I, I did watch Tiger King. As a vegan, it just disturbs me. You know, it's hard for me to just put out of my mind the what's happening to the animals and focus on how ridiculous the people are, which I know is why the show is funny. But it has been very funny, uh, some of the memes, so... It's been a good time for that reason. Um, oh, I'll show you my favorite. Before we go, I'll show you my favorite coronavirus meme so far. <laughs> Hilarious. I think I'm at, like, I'm, like, at a... I'm getting to be a seven right now. Watch out. <laughs> and I can't even believe that... This is going to go till at least April 30th, probably beyond that, and it, today is only the 4th, and it's only been three weeks, and oh my gosh, it, I'm only like a third through this. Oh man. <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you're all hanging in there too, and I will talk to you later. Bye. That's right. We can't pretend Clover doesn't exist. Clover runs this house. Clover runs this house. Uh-oh. River's jealous. River's jealous. Who wants kisses? <gasps> Who wants kisses? Oh, oh, hello. Hey, hello. Pet me too. Pet me too. This is what happens when I'm working from home, like, all day. <laughs>